Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. Now, do you agree? Yeah. Explain the mothership. Thank you, brother. My brother said, Brother Minister, the time is now 9.30. You have been teaching two hours. Remember, the messenger said you have a greater work awaiting you. <laughs> Plus, yesterday was quite taxing. It is true, but you'd rather see me kill myself. Yes, you would. You know something? I don't blame you. Because the more you get knowledge, the more you reach for knowledge. And I know this is going to have a, an effect on me. After I leave you, you feel good, some of you. But I won't feel so good. Because I will be drained. But I will recover by the help of our Lord tonight and tomorrow. But if you get some knowledge that will help to make you a better man and a better woman to get by in this adverse world, I think I better do my duty by you while I have time. Because I may die between tonight and tomorrow, and then I could have done more good and failed to do it than I would feel. I couldn't feel at all, but, you know. <laughs> explain the mothership. What do you want to explain? Do you want me to say that there's none up there? Or what is it up there for? Yeah, there's a ship up there, a half a mile by a half mile. It's called a mother ship because in it, it contains 1,500 little bombing planes that the devil calls flying saucers. They're very real. The messengers taught us about them for 43 years. They're up there, they're being seen, and soon you're going to see them over the major cities of America. You're not going to say that Elijah Muhammad is crazy. You're going to see him with your eyes. But I don't have time to go into all of his teachings. Question number two. Is it true about Mr. Elijah Muhammad's illicit relationship with his secretary as mentioned in Malcolm X's biography? Now, and listen to what you're asking me. If I ask you, listen, please listen. I'm going to give you a picture. Somebody says you went to bed with somebody, okay? Somebody said that. You've heard them kind of talk before. Now. I heard it just like you heard it. Then you come to me. Is it true that so-and-so went to bed with so-and-so? Anybody go to bed, they ever invite you in the room? So how in the hell can I be a witness of something I don't know nothing about? the wrong man to ask such a question. Now, if you ask me that about myself, then maybe I could answer. But if you ask me that about somebody else, I can't answer with truth. I know nothing of no illicit relationship. I know nothing of and I believe that nothing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad does is illicit. <laughs> now, if you want to ask me something, ask me in a way of intelligence. See, it's put there so filthy that I would never 
they put a good word on such filth. That's filth. This is filth. Did Mr. Muhammad have an illicit relationship? That's filth. How in the hell could a man clean us up from filth and be guilty of filth himself? The tree is known by the fruit it bears. If all you damn women can't get me to lie in a damn bed with you, how in the hell could, you, could Muhammad inspire this in me if he was other than that himself? And you know damn well that a lot of you tried and would like to. But damn it, I don't call you for no bedroom what? I call you to your salvation. Don't give a damn about you in no bedroom. You could streak in front of me and I probably wouldn't even be impressed. Now, how in the hell could a man make a man like that? Ask all these women around me. Go ahead and question them. Ask them how many of them I went to bed with. Stand up, any of you. God damn it, you got to sit down. Now, you can't even get close enough to me but just to give me the greetings and I like it that way. But if I wasn't under Mr. Muhammad's guidance, I don't know what I'd do. That's true. I love you, sisters, every one of you. And I love you enough to give my life, as Messenger Muhammad teaches me, for your good. But I don't love you enough to disgrace myself with you in such shameful conduct. I was taught that by Messenger Muhammad. He teaches all of us that way. And he is the perfect example of what he teaches. Now I'm going to point you to something that I think you should study. And I'm going to give it to you now. And I want you to think about it. And I want you to listen. I'm just going to give it to you because some have courage to ask the question and others got it rolling around in the brain but too scared to ask it. There has never been a prophet of God in the history of the world that Allah confined to one wife. Every divine messenger of God had more than one wife. But the God never charged them with being unrighteous. See, what you and I engage in, that may be called filth. Because a man is not looking for a woman to take care of. He's looking for somebody to have pleasure with and cast off to the side. But no divine messenger of God is like that. Abraham was the father of the righteous, but he had two that was buried with him. Sarah on one hand and Hagar on the other. What did you say about that? But Jesus admitted that Abraham was the father of the righteous. And Lazarus was seen in the bosom of Abraham, but he had two wives, now didn't he? Come on and talk to me. <laughs> I don't have time to run it down for you, which I could go all through the Bible and show you these divine prophets of God, loved of God. They never just had one wife. They had some of them many wives. Why? You know, what is this, man? I know you. I hear you talking. I hear you thinking. Because many of us are so low down and We want a lot of women, but we don't want women for good. This woman here ain't nothing to play with, brother. Yes, she can give you pleasure, but damn it, she can give you hell too.
And there is, it is entirely evil to take a woman for something to play with. She's a serious creation. You and I have not reached that level yet. 